history of Microsoft. It was the year 1976. A Viking spacecraft shows the first pictures of the rocky desert terrain on Mars. Hotel California topped the charts, giving the Eagles one of the biggest selling albums of all time, and the United States government issued the first of the now obscure $2 bill. And on February 3rd, 1976, Bill Gates took a stand by writing and publishing a letter in computer notes. He accused hobbyists of stealing software and pointed out that if they didn't start paying for the product, there would be no incentive to make software available to them. He then added his address and suggested they pay up or make suggestions. This made Bill Gates the first of many programmers to bring the piracy of software and its effect on the industry to light. In a certain sense, if things hadn't worked out, I could always go back to school. I was officially on leave. I didn't have like uh, a family to, to feed or anything, but I was... Uh, doing the payroll, writing the taxes, doing the contracts, figuring out how to price the software. In fact, I was business oriented enough that I wrote a, a letter about software piracy, uh, sort of complaining that a lot of these computer groups weren't paying for their software. And that really became a cause celeb at the time of, you know, is it fair that this guy's asking for money? Should we pay for this stuff? MITS was very controversial because some of the memory boards they had been shipping didn't work and they'd been late with a lot of things so some people felt like it was a way of getting back at mitts to to take the basic and we had the first computer convention there people came in so we microsoft was a business uh from the, the beginning not that we had any uh clear view that it would ever be a large business but you know, i had to pay my these friends i'd hired at a minimum i had to make enough money to write their paycheck and if I got enough confidence we could sell a lot more then I'd be able to hire in even more people to to get ahead to be the leader in doing lots of products that could share code with each other and you know take take the market a few months later on March 27th Albuquerque New Mexico hosted the first annual world Altair computer convention with an opening address from Bill Gates the very next month, Microsoft was proud to hire their first official full-time employee. His name was Mark McDonald. Meanwhile, in California, a loan for $5,000 was granted to Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, who were running a small company known as Apple. With emerging interest in technology, new magazines Byte, Computer Graphics and Art, and Dr. Dobbs' Journal of Computer Calisthenics and Orthodontia hit the stands and Microsoft's first advertisement appeared in the July issue of Digital Design Magazine. That summer, Shugart developed a small five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive for microcomputers at a price of 390 bucks. A few months later on September 1st, Microsoft shows signs of growth by leasing office space in Albuquerque, New Mexico's Two Park Central Tower building. Now with an official Microsoft workspace, in November 1976, Paul Allen decided to resign from MITS to join Microsoft full-time. And over the course of 1976, the name Microsoft is variously written. It wasn't until the trade name registration in November that the company settled on how to spell its own name. And Microsoft was finally registered in the state of New Mexico. 1976 was a big year in the U.S. as it celebrated its bicentennial, and Microsoft's first year, officially known as Microsoft, ended with an office, an employee headcount totaling six people, and revenues adding up to more than $22,000. But having an office name was just the beginning for this new company in New Mexico called Microsoft.